John. So this is a um, so this is, this is a this is a, a power chair, right? It's a pediatric power chair. This happens to be an Invacare TDX series. Uh -huh. So it's mid-wheel drive, and it's great for uh, kids who are learning to drive because that mid-wheel creates a nice center, um, uh, a nice center place that the chair spins on. So if it were rear-wheel drive, the chair would spin on its rear. If it were front-wheel drive, the chair would spin on its front. But having a mid-wheel drive is very, much more intuitive so that when the child does turn right, uh, the chair turns right, centered on the child themselves. Gotcha. So it's much easier to learn to navigate tight spaces with this. And it can spin on its own. Um, your, your spinning diameter is half of what it would be otherwise. Much easier to deal with small and other spaces. Gotcha. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let's walk around like the back of the chair. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to point at stuff and you tell me what it is. All right, because well, actually let's start up here. So it looks like we have a head array. Yeah, this is an yeah. ASL head array. This okay. is the... Um, I believe it's the Alt Elite. This is the Elite. It's the three pads, so the pads are all separate, and this is the one I prefer to use. There are more basic ones where the pads on the side just, um, they're on like a door hinge, so they hinge away, and okay. that's how adjustable they are. Um, but these are completely movable because they're on these um, socket, ball and socket type, okay. type of mount. So you have uh, two switches here or three? There are three. So there's a left turning, right turning, and forward. And when I say left and right, that's the position I have them in, but that can be switched. Each switch in here can be um, switched to do a different drive movement. Gotcha. And, and are these proximity switches? These that, are proximity are switches. So proximity right. switches don't require any actual pressure. They work off of the electrical conductivity of your skin. So um, all you have to do is come within about a quarter of an inch of the surface of that switch and it will activate. And that is that something that's something that can be adjustable as far as how close you have to Not have on to these. It? You can get a separate head array s switch system. So if you get the separate switches themselves, some of them have the adjustment on there, a little mm -hmm. screw that you turn and that changes the range, but it's a very small range. Okay. Um, what's important is that they're different from mechanical switches. Um, not that they're better or worse, but what's important is that these won't break due to the mechanical components, which will happen to mechanical switches over time when they get used a lot. Like kind of your basic standard jelly bean switch you're talking That's about. That's right. So gotcha. these will last a very long time because there's no mechanical components. As long as you keep the electrical parts and the wires intact, these will last a long time. All right. So we can really get into those proximity switches. Maybe we'll do that in another video sure. soon there. Let's get back to, uh, to this mess behind the chair, huh? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to come down. I'm going to point to this, this box right here. So that's the ASL interface box. So the headrest doesn't work on its own. The headrest has to come down. These are the wires coming from those proximity switches. Uh -huh. They will come down here, and they will connect into this box. So here's the cable that comes from that headrest. Okay. plugs into here. This makes a usable signal that the wheelchair will understand. Okay. So then the signal goes out from here and into the power chair drive system. So this makes the controls from the head array usable for the power chair. So this has to come from ASL. And if you get something like this for your power chair, you have to specify what kind of power chair you have so that this box is specifically designed to go with the electronics in that power chair. Gotcha. So I would call okay. them and I would say, I have an Invacare with a Mark 6 electronics, and they would give me a box for Invacare Mark 6 electronics. Does this, so does this, do, does this box do anything else other than connect the head array to the electronics of the chair? You can connect other types of switches to the chair. Okay. So what you can do, For what purpose? Well, if you, w if, you, if you want it to be able to interface to the power chair but not use a head array specifically, you could use other switches and plug them into this um, attendant. You would need an, an adapter, and I can show you that later. Um, but this serves, act what this really serves as is an interface so that you can drive with alternative access. Gotcha. So that you're not using just a joystick. Okay. This is your portal into that ability. Gotcha. All right. So this this Invacare box right here is that the it says MK is that the are those the electronics? Yeah. So this is a Mark. Well, no, this is a Mark Six uh, auxiliary box. So you have to get a Mark Six because this is a Mark Six 
chair. Okay. Um, but this is the auxiliary box. So this will take the signal from the power chair and turn it into a usable signal for environmental control. This is what you would plug in if you want to be able to access your communication device through the power chair. So you could use the head array not just to drive, but you can use the head array to control a mouse on a computer or your communication device. And, and this, that's the this box gives you, need you for the that? signal. Right. All right. There's uh, two serial